Good evening. I'll call the meeting to order at this time. Um, before we get into the Pledge of Allegiance, the invocation, I did want to mention that um, Councilman Mayor Pro Tem Ashley's father passed away um, last evening, and um, I think it would be appropriate, and that's also the father-in-law of Jan Ashley, one of our employees, so um, I think it would be appropriate if if we stand for a moment of silence, please. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Now I'll ask Councilman Dunn if he'll lead us in the invocation. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to come together tonight work with the community and do what we think is best for the community with input from everyone involved. And please be with Emory Ashley's family as they are suffering and lost his father today. Yesterday, excuse me. <clears throat> please let us make the best decisions possible for the community. Amen. Amen. If you will, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Gentlemen, you have the agenda in front of you. I think there are some known additions and corrections to the agenda. Okay. Mayor, I'd like to add a percentage John. Consent agenda item number 10, special event by Marlon Lee. Special uh, business item number five, which is the inclusion of the Mark Park and Miracle League baseball field board and remove item three from the business items to be added at a later date. Okay, that's item number three under business item two. Number two, mm -hmm. okay. All right, any other additions or corrections to the agenda this time? <coughs> Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? Make a motion. We approve the agenda as amended. Second. The motion is second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. And we have a few presentations this evening. Uh, the first one being a proclamation recognizing April 18th as Electrical Lineman Appreciation Day. And at this time, I'll call um, Patrol Captain James Grady to the front for the oath of office. All 
I, James Grady. I, James Grady. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. That I will continue to be faithful. I will continue to be faithful. And bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance. To the state of North Carolina. To the state of North Carolina. And to the constitutional powers. And to the constitutional powers. And authorities which are. And authorities which are. Or may be established. Or may be established. For the government thereof. For the government thereof. That I will endeavor, I will endeavor to support, to support, maintain, maintain, and defend, and defend the constitution of said state. The constitution of said state. Not inconsistent with, not inconsistent with the constitution of the United States. With the constitution of the United States. That I will be alert, I will be alert and vigilant, and vigilant, vigilant, to enforce the criminal laws of this state. To enforce the criminal laws of this state. That I will not be influenced. I will not be influenced in any manner. In any manner. On account of personal bias. On account of personal bias. Or prejudice. Or prejudice. And that I will faithfully. And I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Execute the duties of my office. Execute the duties of my office. As police captain. As police captain. According to the best of my skill. According to the best of my skill. Abilities. Abilities. And judgment. And judgment. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, we have a few public hearings on the agenda this evening. Um, the first one being um, conditional use permit request, CUP 1702, Linda Calder. <coughs> There's anyone in the audience this evening who would like to speak for or against in one of the public hearings, please stand and be sworn in at this time if anyone wants to speak for or against. You'll be sworn in by the clerk, please. Okay. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Mayor, I need to make a motion to go into the Yeah, make a motion to go into the public hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second to open the public hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 I will turn it over to the planning director. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor and Council, the applicant is requesting a conditional use permit to allow for a private club on a 4.46 acre tract of land located within the B2 zoning district. The property considered for approval is located on the west side of North Brightleaf Boulevard, approximately 260 feet from its intersection with East Market Street. And I will reference you on the map. On the aerial map, this is the sound station. This is the Rite Aid drugstore. And across the street, this is the old Lloyd's transmission shop, which has been torn down. And this is the uh, outlined in red is the location of the conditional use permit. It, uh, for a number of years, has been in use as a barbershop in Betty's Bar. And um, while I'm over here, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and reference you to the site plan that's proposed. The area in pink is the existing building as it is today. Um, the area that's in yellow is indicated as the parking lot, which must be provided in order to support the facility. And the green areas will represent landscape areas. Um, the property is former home of Betty's Bar and has been in continuous operation as a bar for many years. The new owner is seeking to expand the business to include mixed drinks by the glass without prepared food service. North Carolina Alcohol and Beverage Control can issue full ABC permits if the establishment is a private club with membership requirements. 
The town GDO in the table of permitted uses has identified private clubs as a permitted use within the B2 district. Conditional use permit, <coughs> as long as a conditional use permit is issued by the town. The request for a private club also represents a change of use and triggers full compliance with the Town of Smithfield UDO ordinance to include on-site parking, landscaping, and buffering from adjacent residential uses. A site plan has been submitted, which I referred to you already, showing the site coming into compliance as much as practical with the current development regulations and includes a paved parking lot with 30 spaces Landscaping includes a buffer consisting of a solid fence and plant material. The applicant has not submitted building elevations or stated any intent to modernize the front building facade. With one exception, in order to get a standard access to the parking, which is in the rear of the building, there will have to be an architectural modification made to the building as a little out structure that was a utility type room that's located on the side of the building in order to get a standard driveway access through there. Part of that will have to be torn down. The remaining part of it will actually act as the utility um, room that it has some uh, electrical wiring in it and some piping in it. And uh, so there'll be about four feet of the build, a little structure left. It's, so they're gonna take down about eight feet of it and that will allow for two-way traffic going into the rear parking lot. Uh, the, plan, uh, the planning department's recommendation uh, is, well, excuse me, let me uh, get a little ahead of myself. Environmentally, there does not appear in, to be any sensitive areas associated with a conditional use permit. The zoning to the north, south, and east, and west is all B2. Is consistency with the strategic growth plan is that a private club is consistent with the recommendations in the comprehensive growth management plan, which calls for commercial uses near the intersection of Brightleaf and Market. It will be constructed in uh, compliance with the uh, Unified Development Code, and it is compatible with the adjacent uh, uses. The proposed nightclub will call, qualify for a wall sign on Brightleaf Boulevard and will be permitted separately. Fire protection will be by the town of Smithfield as well as water and sewer, and the street is US 301, so any driveway permits will be required from NCDOT. The town of Smithfield will be the electrical provider also. The planning department recommends approval of the request for a conditional use permit to allow for a private club providing that the site plan is shown uh, showing adequate on-site parking, landscaping, and buffered, buffering is approved and constructed prior to the operation of a private club. In other words, uh, gentlemen, where uh, staff's recommendation is that it continue to operate as, uh, as a bar, Betty's Club, until such time that these improvements are made and accepted by the town, and at such time that that uh, has happened, then the permit will be recorded in the courthouse. It will not be recorded until such time that that occurs. Uh, the, town of, uh, the planning board at its March 2nd meeting unanimously voted to recommend approval of the request for a conditional use permit to allow for a private club on property located in the B2 zoning district. The town council is now requested to review the petition for a private club with a B in the B2 zoning district and make a decision in accordance with the finding of fact for conditional use permit. Pl uh, planning department would right, like to further define its recommendation that no parking be allowed in front of the building or to the side of the building, that the landscaping is to meet the buffer and screening requirements uh, of the UDO and that the the parking lot be paved with handicapped parking and curb stops and the trash corral be enclosed as part of the uh, site, plan, site improvements. With that, the town council is requested to review the petition for a private club within the B2 zoning district and make a decision. And I stand open for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambler. 
Uh, Ms. Calder, you heard the, the testimony given by Mr. Embler. Do you have any other, um, or do you agree with what he said? Yes, sir. Do you have any other testimony that you would like to present at this time? Okay. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak for or against this? Seeing none, I'll open it up to the council for questions. I have a question, Paul. The driveway and the parking, is that to be paved? Yes. Will be paved? Yes. Uh, one note to that, uh, as some of you may be aware, uh, Sound Station is uh, propo uh, proposing an expansion on their property. They bought the Lloyd transmission property and with their existing property, they're going to recombine the properties and construct approximately a 24,000 square foot building there. And once it's constructed, they will demolish the um, the existing structure so there'll be all new parking and new building for the sound station um, right now there's a in where the old lloyd's was and um, the existing sound station um, i mean um, the betty's bar there was a shared common drive mm -hmm. that shared common drive will go away in this situation and betty's bar will have their access and the sound station will have their access and that will have to be permitted through DOT. Any other questions? Mr. Amber at this time? Second motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion to close. Motion to second, second. To, close. Motion to, second to close the public hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Hey, gentlemen, see the findings of fact. There are four findings of fact on, I think it's page 17 of your agenda package. Go through those. I'll make a motion we approve findings one through four of findings of fact. A motion and a second to approve the findings of fact. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, based upon satisfactory compliance with the above four stated findings and fully contingent upon acceptance and Compliance with all conditions as previously noted herein and with full incorporation of all statements and agreements entered into the record by the testimony of the applicant and applicant's representative, I move to recommend approval of conditional use permit application CUP-17-02. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the request. All in favor say aye. 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 All those. Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, the next public hearing is Zoning Text Amendment Request ZA-17-02 Rob's Hydraulics. I have a motion to open public hearing. Make a motion to open public hearing. Second. A motion and a second to open public hearing. I'll turn it over to Mr. Embler. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, basically, this ordinance is, um, was going to be corrected in the UDO revision that we're working on currently. Uh, but there is a um, business that is uh, being propo proposed in an existing B3 zone. And in order to be more timely with that rezoning, we suggested that they go ahead and request this amendment request. Um, what it is, this has been one of those things that when you adopt an ordinance years ago, that um, probably should not have made it into the ordinance. And the reason why is that all our contractor storage yards are located in B3 zoning districts and light industrial districts. And we, our ordinance said you cannot have them. So what we're doing is actually correcting the ordinance to meet a lot of the existing conditions. Plus the fact there's one additional thing in this ordinance that it would be a permitted use by right, which means staff would um, approve the, um, the request providing that all the landscape codes and development codes in the UDO are set forth and as far as buffers and landscape and screening. And uh, with that being said, that's the um, a brief explanation of what it is and um, this was brought to the uh, planning board last month. Uh, they discussed it and they made a, a motion and it passed to make a recommendation uh, in favor of the uh, uh, 
res, uh, ordinance uh, change by a 5-2 vote. And so um, I stand open for any questions and you're, we're, staff is asking you to take consideration of the planning board's recommendation and the ordinance amendment as shown on page 30 of your packet. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak about this request? Seeing none, we'll turn it over to the council. Any questions for Mr. Embler? If not, we have a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second by Councilman Wood. All in favor say aye. <coughs> Opposed? I have a motion to approve or deny ordinance 490. Are, are we, we voting to change the ordinance or voting to approve this? It's it, both. It, it's both. It, it's an ordinance amendment is right. what is requested. To allow it. So you have to update the ordinance. So Paul, can the EEO come moving forward? Once it's established by the EDA committee and so forth, this should already be corrected, right? Yes, this this will be registered as a, an existing ordinance when the new when the modification's done, it's probably gonna to come to you at the June meeting. Right. Uh, it will already show in the in, in what you receive as a change. Uh, the, and that chart will be modified that's on page thirty in the current ordinance and be in place for a few months into the new. I don't have to come back for approval again. That no, it will not come back no, again. It will already be updated right. in, the, in, the, in the UDO, in the new revision. But what this does is this goes ahead and makes the change, so then yeah. you know, like this storage yard is, is, a, is a use by right. Right. In that district. Thank you. Yes. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve Change of this UDO as per the attached draft ordinance. Second. I have a motion and a second to make an update to the UDO. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Embler. This time we will move on to citizens' comments. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak, please come forward. Hold on one second, sir, before you leave. <laughs> Put you on the spot. There's not too many times I see a young man in the back, so I'm sure you're here for a reason. And it's not just because your mother or your lieutenant colonel father told you to come to this meeting. Would you like to say why you're at this meeting? Yeah, come, come on up to the front, Wade. <laughs> 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 So this is uh, William Gaskins, and William, you want to just tell what, what troop you're with and why you're here this evening? Yeah, you come to the microphone. <laughs> I wasn't going to do that, but Councilman Harris. <laughs> uh, I'm in Troop 77, and I'm here for a badge, communications. Communications badge. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming out this evening. Okay. <laughs> I can tell you, Mr. Mayor, that Troop 77 was out at Camp Tuscarora last weekend, and they were sleeping in some very cold weather. Um, I was out there as well and appreciate everything that everyone did, so good job out there. I was there two weeks ago with Troop 77, but I slept in my car. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very cold. <laughs> okay, citizens' comments. Anyone like to speak at citizens' comments? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now we'll move on to business items. Business item number one which is on page 103 in your package, is the bid award and contract approval for the fiscal year 2016-2017 street <coughs> resurfacing project. Turn it over to 
uh, Mr. Branch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, City Manager, Town Council. Um, this year's resurfacing uh, project originally um, consisted of 17 streets that would receive an inch and a half overlay. Three of these streets uh, will receive a uh, uh, were required to be milled down an inch and a half below the gutter line before they can be paved for drainage purposes. They've been paved over uh, in the past. So, um, we're, we're budgeted $300,000 in this year's budget for the project. 14 bid packets were sent out to uh, area contractors. Uh, we received 14 bids back uh, from companies uh, as listed, Garris Grading and Paving, Turner Asphalt, James, P James Paul Edwards and Barnhill Contracting. Uh, the lowest bid came in at $334,727.82. Um, our current contract allows us to write to increase or decrease the various amounts of work up to 25%. Uh, the Public Works Department is requesting to remove two of the streets of 17 down to 15 um, in order for us to stay within our budgeted amount, which will allow us to pave a, a little over a mile of city streets uh, on this year's project. Staff uh, recommends awarding the 1617 resurfacing project to the lowest bidder, uh, Garris uh, Grading and Paving. Staff also recommends removing the two streets uh, from the 17 that went out on the bid packets and dilute it down to 15 in order to stay within our budget. Uh, council was uh, asked to approve the project and award the uh, uh, lowest bidder gears grading and paving in the amount of three hundred thousand okay. dollars. Questions for Mr. Branch? Um, just for <coughs> public knowledge, we we uh, we have an ongoing program for street paving, and correct me if I'm wrong. We we recently have reevaluated <coughs> that program because I think it's a ten-year program. Some of the streets that needed work may not have been where they needed to be, and we have changed some of that so that the streets that are in need were moved up and those will be paid. Yeah, that's correct. Um, what we've done is uh, our, our contracted engineer, he went out and, and, and walked the project as well as myself, and there were some streets that needed to be moved up. They were graded from one to two. And, and we actually went through the survey. We took the, their recommendations, I took the engineer's recommendations and what I saw. And uh, um, I made some appropriate changes and that's what you see before you tonight. And, and going forward, you will continue to evaluate that as, as necessary? Yes, sir, yes, sir. We're, we're gonna be uh, making some uh, requests during the upcoming budget to uh, look at the uh, possibility of getting another study done. but. Until that's done or approved, we'll, we'll continue to do that. Any other questions? Make a motion we approve the request. Second. Have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Lenny. Move to business item number two, consideration and approval of various budget amendments. Greg. Uh, council, permission to speak with uh, the town manager to the side before I start with this. <laughs> I don't like it when my finance director does that, but I guess so. So while we're waiting on, on Greg, I, I did want to mention um, that tomorrow evening, um, April 5th from 5.30 to 7.30 is Mr. Wallace Ashley's visitation at First Baptist Church. And then the funeral will be, uh, the service will be at 11 o'clock at First Baptist on Thursday, April the 6th. So um, I encourage everyone to, to attend that. And again, Mr. Ashley was a, a figure in our community, a well-respected attorney, um, actually attended Cub Scouts at his house and um, one fond memory of him except for being friends with his son basically my entire life and um, spending a lot of time over at his house um, was, and I guess maybe this is why I'm in politics, maybe I'm not sure, but I used to think it was so cool um, on election day that he would be on the radio with Mr. Mr. Carl Lamb, WMPM, 
um, broadcasting live from the courthouse or the Board of Elections or where I believe it's the courthouse um, or town hall maybe um, broadcasting live the re uh, election results. I just thought that was one of the coolest things that, that he did. So anyway, uh, visitation is, is tomorrow from 530 to 730. I'll turn it over to Greg for business item number two. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Um, you have before you uh, two budget amendments. Um, these two budget amendments are fairly straightforward. Um, the first is uh, simply relocating um, the Beaver uh, relocation cost to um, the Power Bill Department. It was inadvertently budgeted in the Streets Department, and the, that is for $13,000 that we're shifting around. Um, item number two um, has to do with the um, great job that John Blanton did in getting insurance companies of individuals responsible for the accident on I-95 back in October 2016. Um, we got some $54,000 back from insurance companies, <clears throat> and as such, um, we can increase the line items that we paid expenditures from, um, including reimbursing neighboring fire departments that assisted us in that accident. Um, any questions about those two budget amendments? Item number three is in table. Is that right? That's correct. I make a motion we approve this request. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the two budget amendments. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you, Greg. <clears throat> now we'll move to item number three, discussion discerning, concerning Lake Park Circle. Mr. Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll address you to the screen, which is a aerial photograph of Lake um, Park Circle. The Homeowners Association of Lake Park Circle came to the town requesting that the town take over this private road, which runs from Country Club Road right here to the cul-de-sac at the end. Um, these are all townhomes along here, and right here, Though it shows vacant lots, those are actually constructed townhomes now as well. Uh, this subdivision was created several years ago. Um, it was created outside of what would be our UDO that would be acceptable for the town to overtake this, this project, um, mainly because of the setbacks of all of these uh, townhomes is not far enough off the road. Uh, it was built to a different standard with the understanding that this would be a private road. Um, when the Homeowners Association came to us to evaluate if the town would be willing to take over this road, there was a couple of things that we looked at. First, Geotechnologies came out and did a survey of the road, um, making sure that it was in adequate condition for the town to take it over. That's, that survey and that study is in your packet. Uh, they found several things that would need to be upgraded, just minor repairs to the roadway and the roadway surface that would need to be done and then they felt that the town could adequately take the road over in its present condition. Um, also, when we met with the Homeowners Association, we do have a representative here, uh, we discussed that the town would not uh, want to undertake any type of responsibility for any of the right-of-ways outside of the road because of the setbacks. So oh, I, we talked to our town attorney about creating some type of contract with the homeowners association to make sure that the town did not assume any type of liability outside of the roadway uh, due to the setback issue. Um, they agreed to that. They've also agreed and met with Lenny Branch out there on site and agreed to upgrade the road as requested and uh, indicated in the study from Geotechnologies should the town decide to take that road over. If we do take the road over, we would add that to our Powell bill uh, for maintenance in the future. 
Uh, we anticipate it be a several years before anything major would be needed out there once those repairs would be made. Um, at this time, there would be no cost to the town to take the road over. The cost would be in future years when the road needed repair. Uh, we would also be doing um, street sweeping, uh, snow removal, and those types of things on this road that we don't already that we don't do currently. Um, at this point, it's uh, I would stand open any questions uh, the council might have on this request. I have a couple of questions. Um, I know I've heard of us taking over roads. Uh, I, I'm sure there's a policy, but I, I don't remember, since I've been on the council, there may have been one, but I don't remember us actually taking over uh, a private road like this. Do we, do we have a policy in place for these types of situations? The only policy we have in place is to do the research we have done and bring the request to the council. There's no policy in place of what roads we would take over, what roads we would not. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't want to take over a road that's going to generate additional expenses for the town immediately or in the near future. Um, the issue here is the homeowner association is in the city limits. Uh, this entire project here is in the city limits. They receive all other city services and they pay the same tax rate as everybody else. They feel that they should that the town should control the road. So, so based on your opinion, uh, professional opinion of our staff, the taking over this road would, would not require a, a extreme expense. And it comes to my mind, curb and guttering and those type of things, that, that's in place already or is not needed? Or? Curb and gutter is in place on this road and it is in fine, it's in condition, normal fine condition. And I go back to, which I think you said that the homeowner will bring the road up to specs and, and then we at that time we will take over the road, is that correct? That's correct. That's the recommendation. That's, that's the agreement between the homeowners association and us right now if the town elects to take over the road. Any other questions? There is, I would mention that there is a stormwater pond on the far side, um, and we will not be taking any responsibility for that stormwater pond. Um, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I'm not sure. Uh, one of my relatives was involved in development of this property, so I would recuse myself from voting on that. What is the advantage for us to do this? There's I mean, no other than being good, <laughs> the good town that does this, what, what is the advantage for us? There's like no we're taking responsibility, financial the, responsibility for something in the future that may not, it just doesn't see the advantage there. I, I just don't see it. There's no economic advantage to the town to take I mean, the road. You're putting him, you're putting Mr. Branch is true that work another piece of the, of the town. Um, oh. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to understand. I mean, I don't, I'm just trying to understand. We're not making a recommendation that the town should take the road over. Oh, I understand. I'm, I'm just saying, but it can come down to that in a few minutes, whether yeah. we will or won't. Right. That's what I'm trying to figure out. What's right. the advantage of us to do it? The reason. There, there, there is not a economic benefit to the town to take the road over. It's just a matter that if the town feels that it owes, has a responsibility to the taxpayers who are on that road um, to take it over. Certainly when the subdivision was created, it was created in such a way and it was agreed upon at that time that it would be a private road. One of the reasons I asked the question, I, I, obviously the town, I assume, was consulted when this was developed whatever was necessary and I was questioning whether we had a policy for these types of events to occur uh, another location that comes to mind uh, is industrial park drive area out by the theater which was developed and uh, with no curb and gutters no sidewalks uh, and uh, it, 
this one doesn't concern me, but I just think we need, and maybe it's not appropriate for us to have some type of a policy in place for dealing with these type of situations uh, so that we don't have this presented to us in this manner. I mean, that, does that make sense? Uh, we can certainly develop some type of policy. Uh, inevitably, it's still probably going to end up in front of the board. Uh, now, Mr. Bryant, I'm sorry. I, I think I'm right in saying, and maybe I'm wrong, but I think I heard where one of the towns, uh, Clayton, I think, has a program where they have a five-year program, and if you meet stipulations, mm -hmm. after five years, the town takes back or takes control of the subdivision or the roads and so forth, and I don't know if it's exactly the same, but that's the reason I am, I'm asking the question. It, it yeah. sounds like we might need some type of policy. Well, I, and I know what you're talking about, Barry, and, that, and that's, even though we don't necessarily have a policy, I think what they do is they, they actually, when, when a subdivision is built or a new, and a new road is put in, instead of immediately going and accepting the road, even though it, it, it meets our standards, they do allow X number of years to pass by just to make sure this case, that, that time period's already happened. Right, it's been right. 14 years on, on this particular one. So, but, but I agree with you. It's something, it's something that we, we look into. We had several people talking ago. Maybe you were trying to make a comment. Oh. And just kind of got, uh, I didn't want to cut you off. So I'm no, I, I, I was just going to bring to the council's attention that what we normally do in a case like this is to make sure that the road is constructed in, as, at the town standard. Um, it would be just like a path or anything like that that they wouldn't want the town to come in and take over a private path. We would, we would ask that they uh, basically allow us enough uh, uh, right of way to be able to come in and the road has to be constructed up to the town's uh, standards, which is uh, eight and two, I think, is, is that correct, Paul? Eight and two? Uh, yeah, eight, eight inches of base and two inches of asphalt is the minimum of the policy. So what we've done is just merely went in and and made sure that the road is constructed up to our standards as far as what we require. And then uh, there were some uh, specifications that were recommended that actually needed to be done. We met with the HOA, they agreed that you know, they, would, uh, they would make up any repairs that, that the engineer uh, asked of. Uh, we met with them, I marked the actual areas and, and they're willing to go forward if the council does uh, approve the request. So the road itself is, is built to town standards. Yes. The yeah. road itself is, is, is built to it, it was built originally to town standards. Right. The setback issue is not a problem with the road or anything else. It's just an appearance issue for zoning. Right. And I think that was my understanding is why the road was not accepted when the subdivision was built is because of the setback requirements. That's the only reason that the road was not accepted Staff. And now the agreement on the setback, according to the attorney, is a not, basically a non issue. Just a procedural issue. Any other questions? Mr. Harris, you had mentioned. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, just, I, I think, that, I think the subdivision has this, and I, 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 it was in no way uh, being against it. I just uh, don't think it would be ethical for me. Although we only have four people here, uh, and I uh, got a couple missing, I just don't think it would be ethical for me to vote. Yeah. All right, do we do we have a, a motion to to allow a period to excuse himself? Councilman Harris, excuse himself. Have a motion. Second. Second. second by Councilman Dunn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Right. Any other questions? If not, I'll ask the pleasure of the board. Have a motion to approve or deny this request? So it's a pay the same tax, is that correct? That's correct. It is in city limits. Yes, sir. Yep. If the, if the council elects to take over the road, we want to be sure that all we're taking over is from curb line to curb line, nothing outside of that. 
Yes, sir. Not a coffee. You may. more houses there now and the land has been graded for four more after that. This street will have 32 houses worth over $200,000 a piece. That's $6.4 million of tax base. That is over $36,000 a year that street will be paying to Smithfield every year. When we decided to do the repairs that Mr. Branch recommended, that was so much less than $36,000, it was a no-brainer. You're not going to make money taking this street in. It's not going to cost you money for quite a while. So I can't argue it on a financial basis, but for the fact of the matter, how many streets in Smithfield do you have with 32 owner-occupied houses that are not sending kids to school, that are not calling the police out. Everybody there is my age. I'm not going to tell you how old they are. And we don't have much need for Smithfield City services. Um, you would not be doing something to invest your money for a return, but you sure would be doing something that was the right thing to do for Smithfield citizens. Last year, you all ran an article in the paper that said you were interested in drawing people to Smithfield. One of the things that you recommended was that particular area as a retirement area because it's cheaper to live here. What message are you going to be sending people if you tell them we're not interested in helping you? I think that this is the right thing to do. I don't think I can argue with you financially, but I do believe that what we're paying in taxes will cover what you're going to have to pay in the future because we're bringing this road up to brand new standards for you. Can I answer any questions for you? Any questions for Dr. Coffin? And Dr. Coffin, I know you, but if you don't mind, please state your name and address oh, I'm very and, sorry. and your age for the record. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know your wife. <laughs> My name is Dennis Coffer. I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself to everybody, including the people I have to share a fishing cottage with. Um, I live at 205 Lake Park Circle. That's one of the houses that's finished up there. In fact, it's very close to where the Arrow is. Um, lived there for 14 years, which also tells you it's a pretty well-established community. What else can I answer for you? Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thanks, sir. Hey, gentlemen. I have a motion. I'd like a motion to approve the request. I have a motion to approve the request. Second. And a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, we will move on now to uh, business item number four, discussion concerning property code violations. That you, Mr. Manager? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, at the last council meeting in March, um, it was brought up both by Councilman Lee and Mr. Tony Nixon, who's out in the crowd, um, about some code violations in District 1, as well as some other violations around town. Uh, we had a meeting with staff uh, that was attended by Councilman's Rabel, Harris, and Lee uh, to discuss how to move forward with some of these issues. Uh, we now have had a code enforcement officer in place uh, since 1st of March, so he is out and he is evaluating these properties as well as some of the vehicle violations that were also discussed um, and some car lot violations that we also have in town. Um, the, the purpose of us bringing this back to you today is to uh, provide a little more information uh, as well as uh, explain some direction that town staff intends to take on this matter 
and make sure the council is understandable as far as where we are going and how we are going to get there. Um, during our review, the Tau Code Enforcement Officer located 26 properties in District 1. They're in some form of unsafe condition. Of these properties, about a third of them are rental, and about two-thirds of them are homeowner-owned home or privately owned. Several of the property owners did not live in the state. Ten of these properties have been identified as the worst and requiring immediate attention. So what we are doing is focusing on those ten properties first. Um, we're also focusing on two different car lots in town as well as a couple other places on um, the south side of town that we were already working on. Uh, we also have a mobile home park in town that has several violations and we're also managing the problems over there. Uh, I would also be remiss if I didn't mention that our town attorney was also at our meeting uh, to discuss the legalities of how to move forward on this issue. Um, these 10 properties that I discussed that are in the worst shape, we're in the process of issuing code violation letters now. They've been sent to the property owners. We need to go through a series of three of these letters uh, with small pe with periods of 10 days in between each letter. So you have about 30 days to review these letters and we're in that process now. At that time, what we'll be asking for is for the property owners to come in to us and, and providing us with a plan on how they are going to bring these properties into compliance. If they fail to come in and they fail to provide a plan, then we will begin a, a series of fines against the property owners um, for another uh, period of time. If they don't pay the fines, then that's when information will go to the town attorney and he will seek judgment against these people um, and hopefully from there we will look at condemnation and um, pulling properties down. Now, should understand that if we look at demolishing these properties on our dollar, we're looking anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars with a median of about eight thousand dollars for property. Um, we've got twenty-five thousand dollars that we normally budget in the planning department budget for condemnation. That money is all still there. Um, but that will only touch what we're, what we're talking about if we get to that point. So I want to make sure the council is aware of that. Um, the other properties that are in town, uh, some of the car lots, uh, we have a major one over off of Powell Street that is in major violation. Um, they've received their letters and we are entering into a fine mode with them uh, for having too many junk cars on their lot. Um, at this point, I, I'd stand open to any questions, but this is mostly informational for you. Um, so if you see something that you don't like and how we are moving forward with this, you can bring it to our attention or if you have any questions because chances are there will be complaints from people and you will receive them. So I want to make sure everyone has a thorough understanding of how we're moving forward and what we're going to do. Uh, Councilman Harris, I don't know if you want to discuss any of um, some of the research you were doing or not uh, that we discussed it. You know me, I'm not afraid to talk. <laughs> Sometimes I probably shouldn't. Uh, first of all, I apologize. I, mi I missed last month's meeting. I was in Atlanta on business and I couldn't get around it. Uh, I received a phone call uh, the week following that from Councilman Lee about that evening in this conversation and, and also uh, Tonya uh, spoke that evening also. So uh, I asked uh, Councilman Lee to come by my place of business later that day, which he did, and we rode uh, mainly over in his district. Um, uh, I, I have to tell you, I was, I, I was taken back. I told Councilman Lee I would, I would try to see what we could do to alleviate some of these situations. Uh, there were um, several houses in his district. Uh, doors were wide open. Uh, one house that I looked into had no flooring. Uh, it was cars were on the streets without 
either without tags or without current tags. There were multiple cars and yards over there against the, the reporting in violation. There were a bunch of boarded up houses. Um, so the next day I, per I proceeded to uh, ask the police chief to ride with me, which he did. And then that afternoon I asked the head of the planning department to ride with me, which he did. Uh, well, let me say this is not just about uh, Councilman Lee's district. This is, um, uh, I, I've had the opportunity to ride around town. Uh, there are locations in my district, there's locations in your district, there's locations in, in all of our districts that are, I don't want to use the word blighted, but there, there are problems with those that I think detract from the, the overall appearance of Smithfield. Um, in, in talking to Councilman Lee and, and talking to staff, I think um, a lot of these locations, a lot of these uh, dwellings um, are owner-occupied or owner-inherited. Um, the reality of it is we need to clean them up no matter where they are. And be it a car lot or be it a house or be it a, a, a rental property, we need to do a better job of trying to maintain the appearance in Smithfield. Um, I I'm, be became concerned about the ability of some of the people to um, be able to do what needs to be done to get these houses up to code. Uh, some of them probably aren't in that category, but some of them may well be. And I took it upon myself to have some conversation with some people in town about whether there was a willingness of some people in town that would be willing privately to help uh, some of the people that may be deemed in need of help. Um, and I, I don't have a, Mike, I don't have an exact answer for that right now. I have met with uh, Several people, uh, they are interested, uh, but my thought process that we might be willing to, uh, the, the city needs to do their part, first of all. But there also may be some other avenues that we could help some of the citizens that are in need that have the ability to take the help and to maintain the property. Um, so I, I, I guess that's what you want me to. To, to say, uh, I think it's a, a citywide problem, and I think that we need to come up with some way to identify those categorized and that need to be torn down, need to be repaired, they just need to be cleaned up. But it is the first step, and I applaud Councilman Lee and, and Tony and our staff. We had a meeting, as he said, was uh, it was during the day, so a lot of people couldn't come, but but. Councilman Lee and Councilman Rabel were there, but I think it's important for us to, uh, as a council, to support this. Uh, we've been giving, we've been putting $25,000 a year into the, the budget for condemnations, and I've learned that condemnations um, could be $10,000. Um, um, our town attorney was at the meeting, and. One of the things that I will say to all the councilmen is it, it's, it's time we, as we work through this budget process this year, we have conversation about uh, if we're serious about this, that we need to look at upping that. I, I don't believe that $25,000 has been spent on a, on, on a regular basis, but sending out letters and then not following through with it is, is not getting us a lot. And, and it's not that we're trying to mow down all the older homes in town, but we're trying to beautify Smithfield. So that, that's the intent of it, and uh, it is my opinion that we need to go forward with this and start to work toward this, dealing with this problem. And I would only add to that that it is, it is our goal, of course, to bring people into compliance, not to tear down their homes, not to take possession of their homes. Um, you know, it may ultimately come to that for some of these properties. Uh, 
but it is our hope that we can get people to come into compliance. Um, but at the same time, we, we should put people on notice that we do have these issues, not just in District 1, but throughout the town, here and there, scattered around, and that, that we are serious about issuing these letters and following through to the end. And I've had several calls already this week on this, and I've told them all the same. And there is a culture that believes that this isn't going to happen, and I'm here to make sure that it does happen. I would just like to say, Mr. Manager, uh, I definitely want to thank uh, Mr. Harris uh, for his support, uh, Mr. Rabel. Uh, just for a clerical standpoint, uh, we did have a member of our East Smithville Improvement Organization um, that was there that day. Uh, she's not listed on this report, but Ms. Alice King uh, was at that meeting also. And, um, you know, uh, I've definitely um, had some calls myself, um, definitely from one of these. Um, property owners or whatever and you know I just hope you know as we do send the letters and we do send the enforcement it seems like to me the bar has already been set and uh, I, I talked to this gentleman about two or three times and you know I was just appalled at what he said that you know that our town attorney how he approached him um, got on the phone and he cursed him uh, sent him nasty letters and, um, you know, I just, if that's going to be the tone, it was Mac McDonald. And he, he, I told him I was going to report it tonight. He told me um, that, you know, you got on the phone, you cursed him, um, you sent him about two or three nasty letters. And if that's going to be the tone you send to some people, make sure you do everybody else who are homeowners over there also, because that's part of the enforcement right there. Treat everybody the same way. Well, thank, thank you for those comments. Mr. Mr. <laughs> I just, I, I mean, I'm going to give the town attorney a chance Mr. to respond to that, right? Mr. McDonald has a trailer on that property. Have you seen it? It can be hauled off. You know, his, uh, I, I was told his niece could uh, own it. So it could be a VIN number. We, we were asking to do that. We called him up and asked him to get it off. And I think the inspector was, the town inspector was there, and there was another person there. He was not cussed. He was talked to very nicely. Um, we also contacted his niece and tried to talk to her nicely. Now, that's one of them, the first ones that we um, uh, were given to try to enforce, which is what y'all want to enforce them. So we sent them a letter. It's not a lasting letter. It's a letter that says that it will be enforced and that you have to uh, uh, fix your property or you'll be fined. When you send people letters like that, some of them are going to call you and complain. Um, and he, he called you. I asked you tonight before the meeting, did he call you? Okay, he called me a complaint um, rather loudly. So that's true. You cannot enforce it against him because he's not because he's complaining. The town board has that decision. But when you do with these, some of these people are not going to like it. They're going to complain. He has a condemned building on one lot and a trailer with no windows and the doors wide open and complaints in the neighborhood. I ask him to remove that. Now, if we do not contact those people to ask him to remove it, then ultimately somebody has to remove it, and hopefully that should not be the town of Smithfield because the town of Smithfield will have to pay for that out of tax revenue when, frankly, <coughs> we didn't put the trailer on the lot, you know, and we haven't invested in the house that's dilapidated. So I was trying to tell him that. He has told us that he will fix his properties after all the others are fixed, or at the same time all the others are fixed, or when everybody else agrees to do it, all 75 of them. Um, you know, we can't proceed that way. So um, yes, he has gotten a letter, he's gotten a phone call, which I thought was nice, way to deal with him, try to be personal with him, try to say we need it done, can he do something? We talked with his niece, okay, uh, and tried to be nice to her, I had known him for some time. I knew him when he was a Selma police officer. Uh, he's a good person, um, the, uh, but we were trying to convince him to do that. We sent him a follow-up letter. Everybody's not gonna like this. They don't wanna do it. He says he wants his to be sold. He got letters to clean the property up in 2015. Okay, this is 2017. Um, so, I mean, we just can't have it both ways. Um, either we proceed and enforce, if you want that, but it's gonna make some people mad. It made Mac mad. I'm sorry. Well, excuse me. I'd like to say that uh, this is going to be controversial. 
there are going to be unhappy people. We need to treat them all the same. If it's my best friend, if it's my brother, and they own a piece of property, I expect them to do what needs to be done. But I would ask staff to treat them all the same, treat them professional, and if it gets into a shouting match, please walk away. Because it, it, it's, I told Marlon this, this, this is, this, this is going to be controversial with some people in town because we have not done our job. We have not kept people in, com in compliance, and this is a, this is a change, but we, we need to be serious about this, and we need our staff to be serious about it, and we need to treat people with respect but firm. So Mike, Mike, what I would ask is um, we, we have a list, but we only have $25,000 in the budget. So what I would like to see is, uh, is, a, is a plan um, based when you start to get some information back, working with staff and so forth, to put together a plan of how far this $25,000 will go, um, the estimates, and then as we're in the budget sessions coming up, let's, let's have a plan of how we will deal with the properties I know we have 25 in this year's budget, but I know in years past we've had, I know, at least $50,000 in the budget. Um, you know, several, probably, probably eight, ten years ago, I, I know we, we had probably 50 in the budget as well. And so, but, but we need to know how far that's going to get us, right? Because it could be 15000 or it might be 100000 So we, need, we just need to know for budget purposes and so forth. Yes, one, sir. Of, one of the complaints I got in that phone call was, why am I one of the first ones, you know? So you're going you're to hear that, too. Why don't they do all 75 at one time? I will note that another phone call over there at, on Malta Street, I think it is, right at the entrance, that house has been torn down. That was a phone call. Okay. Okay. Mr. Mayor, yes, I'll make a motion that we move forward with staff's plan of action uh, with the guidance we have given them tonight. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Mr. Manager, you have your marching orders. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And now we'll move on to business item number five, which was added to our agenda. Inclusion Park and Miracle League baseball field bid award for site work, grading, and concrete. Mr. Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I want to thank the council for adding this to the agenda at the last minute. Um, this is somewhat of a regroup from January. Back in December of 16, um, Parks and Recreation went out for bid for uh, the community and uh, for the Inclusion Park and the Miracle League ball field um, in order to do the cement work and the site plan. Um, at that time, we received two bids back. The uh, low bid was approved at the April, I'm sorry, at the January meeting to Professional Services Group LLC. Um, since that time, we've had difficulty getting um, Professional Services Group to sign the contract that was uh, provided during the bid process. Uh, we received an email from them yesterday stating that they would not be able to enter into a contract with us if we didn't change the contract to suit them. Our town attorney had been working with them for a couple of weeks now to try to resolve some of the issues and we, we've come to an impasse. Um, so with that, uh, we went to the second and only next bidder, um, J.P. Edwards, and to see if they would honor their bid. They said that they would honor their bid um, their bid was a little bit higher, but still within budget for what we were trying to do at the Miracle League field and the inclusion park. Um, professional services group was under budget uh, considerably. Uh, was really nice for us, but 
Um, perhaps that's one reason why they're, we're not following through. Uh, I think J.P. Edwards is a more realistic uh, bid uh, and will certainly meet our needs. Uh, if we didn't bring this in front of you tonight, I was concerned that uh, J.P. Edwards may begin bidding other contracts in the interim and may not be available to uh, agree to us to do this contract, uh, leaving us with, with no one. Um, so in front of you, you have the information. Uh, J.P. Edwards' bid was $485,104. We estimate another $40,000 for undercut that may be required um, during this process and during this work. Uh, which is actually less than what the bid was from professional services group. Overall, we're estimating the two are about $20,000 apart, with professional services group being lower than J.P. Edwards. Uh, but that amount can be absorbed within the budget that is currently in existence for the Miracle League Park. We have talked to representatives from Miracle League Field and the Inclusion Park, and they are in agreement to move forward with J.P. Edwards at this dollar amount so that we can move the project forward. So my recommendation to you tonight is to approve J.P. Edwards as bid uh, so we can move forward with the inclusion park and the Miracle League baseball field process. So, so Mike, the, um, I know it's within budget, but this also is within the amount that the Miracle League, as far as their grant and the funds that they have raised for this, correct? That's correct. The funds are available. They are. And they're not town funds. Right. The only town funds available is what we have right. spoken about. Uh, other than what the town has already put in the matching funds for the group. Right. Right. And then I want to say that the changes that the prior contractors requested to the contract, both the engineer and I went over in depth and the engineer got back with him. They are numerous, substantial changes to the contract that we felt could lead us to just more problems later. Um, and this is a national form contract, so these are national standards, and they were trying to change them in numerous areas, page by page. So um, we became concerned with it. And, and we are in legal grounds of, of turning this contract over to the, the, to the <coughs> bidder, is that correct? Turning this over to, to the next the yes. bidder. Yes. It's Mr. Edwards, who I doubt seriously has problems with a form contract. I make a motion we approve this request. Second. Motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Thank you, sir. This time we'll move to council members' comments. Have any additional comments from council? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I do. Um, it's just funny how you go through life and, you know, people enter into your life and 20 years later, they come back full circle. Um, in the audience tonight, uh, I have uh, uh, Mr. Rick High, who's in the back. Um, he was my assistant uh, basketball coach at St. Augustine's College. And um, this year, um, you know, we just celebrated winning 20 years of winning the first ever CIAA championship. Um, I know now he's in town um, doing work with Miss Ida Morton across the street. And um, you know it's, it's just it's good to see him. You know after all these years and stuff, and you know definitely a mentor to me. Um, the coach that year was a Smithfield resident, um, the late Novell Lee, and um, you know it's just just good to see you know how years later you know things come back full circle. And um, you know with Carolina winning the national championship last year, you know um, I just kind of heard uh, one of the commentators, you know, just talking to Roy Williams and, you know, just how much, um, you know, he loved and enjoyed coaching and whatever, and, you know, he wanted to continue to do it. And um, if you go back 20 years ago, Dean Smith retired. And um, in his retirement speech, um, he made mention of a friend, of a colleague who passed away. And that colleague was uh, my head coach, uh, Norvell Lee, who was on the staff that year. So, just kind of a touch of moment to you know, see um, Coach Ty here and you know, just glad to see you. And I just thought I just had to say that. Welcome, sir. <laughs> thank you, Councilman Lee. We, well, just on one note, I think he likes Smithfield so much he don't like his keys in his car. So we're going to need some help trying to get his keys. <laughs> well, well, we might so we just get him out of here. 
How about, hey, would, would you like to buy some real estate here, sir? Yeah, well, we, we do that. <laughs> so, if anybody want to help so we can get his keys out of the please help us. <laughs> I think if you see Chief Blanton, he'll get you in. Well, we appreciate you mentoring Marlon. Councilman Harris? I, I, I wanted to speak on Mr. Ashley. I, I, as most of you know, I, I, I'm not from around here originally lived here in 1990 and when I got on the town council uh, for whatever reason I know it wasn't a gray hair but somebody suggested I go out to Amen Corner which is in the McDonald's at West Smithfield so I, I did um, and uh, I didn't know Mr. Ashley uh, but I he would come in and, and we would talk and I learned <coughs> that uh, Mr. Ashley was in the Army, and uh, I grew up in East Point, Georgia, and that's, uh, is the home of Fort McPherson Army Base on the south side of Atlanta. And come to find out, that's where he was stationed, and and we had many a cup of coffee out there talking about the south side of Atlanta, and and, and of course uh, he loved Carolina Tar Heels, and we had obviously plenty to talk about that. But uh, I, I had an opportunity to, to get to know uh, Wallace Ashley, and he was a fine man. So uh, he, he, he and people like him are what has made this town uh, a wonderful place to live. So I wanted to say that. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm going to back on what Councilman Harris said. Uh, Wallace was a very good man, uh, really good man of my family. Even hear of his passing. But, uh, very fond memories of him and my wife are probably closer than I am, but uh, she loved that man forever. So, uh, very good man, uh, very good man to the community, just as Councilman Harris said, and uh, very proud to have known him. Uh, next thing, uh, I don't know if anybody's aware, but I had an employee about two and a half weeks ago. Former employees retired, uh, had a heart attack in Shrek. Uh, he was actually with Lenny Branch. And uh, Lenny worked and worked and worked as long as the as well as the Shrek staff who did a remarkable job from from Lenny's uh, experience telling me that Lenny was able to save a man's life. <laughs> uh, the, the gentleman was uh, Lynn Corbin, sorry, I, I drew, drew a blank. Uh, I assume he is doing better now. And, uh, but without the cooperation of the Shrek and the defibrillator we had there, uh, the fire department, EMS, the whole staff uh, did a remarkable job. And I know Lenny worked his tail off to begin with. But, uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody, especially Lenny. Uh, give Lynn our And he gives them a good recovery. So uh, I do have a question for Mr. Johnson. Defibrillators, we have one on the top and the lower floor. Top and bottom. Okay. And are, is everybody certified in CPR? Okay. Okay. I was just want to. I, I thought that was the case. I just want to make sure because if that was not happening, you know, without Lenny's experience as a fireman and. and Everybody come to support it. We can have done without them. So, uh, good job, Lenny. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I just want to echo the same, Councilman Wood. Um, when I got the call from Mike, he was on his way to the track. Um, it certainly didn't didn't sound good. And so, um, you know, it was uh, by God's grace, I, I think that we had people there um, at that moment and uh, thank you Lenny and uh, and all the first responders and the staff at SRAC and so forth for, for everything that you did to, to save that gentleman's life. Um, like I said, I just stood up two weeks earlier and gave him a plaque for retirement from the town of Smithfield. Uh, you, you never know, um, you never know, but, but, but thank God that we have individuals that are willing and are trained to, to do that. Do appreciate 
everything that you did. Anyone else? Any other comments? Um, just a couple of other things. Um, May 5th, is that correct, Ham and Yam? May 6th, excuse me, May 6th, Ham and Yam. Put that down on your cal calendars, please. Um, Sarah, thanks for all your, your hard work. Uh, is there anything you want to say about that? Do you have any details you want to share with us at this moment, or is it? Come on up real quick. So the 33rd now annual Ham and Yam Festival will be May 6th. Um, from 9 to 9 p.m. We have more ham and yam foods than ever this year um, with the addition of some creative items. Hopefully y'all have tried um, some of them. I've tried everything and even sweet potato smoothies don't sound very good but they're great. Um, so y'all come and enjoy those. Our entertainment this year are a lot of great local bands um, but we also have not Nantucket from 2.30 to 4 on Saturday and then the Ultimate Eagles Tribute um, on the border from seven to nine that night. So good entertainment, good food, a lot of family fun. Uh, so I hope y'all all come out and join us for that. Good, thank you. And then Sarah, one other thing, there is a, um, an online uh, grant, Parks and Recreation <coughs> grant. I know that's floating around. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have seen it. Um, Voted near us, uh, and I know my, myself, I've voted. Um, do you have any details on that? It's like $20,000. <coughs> It's $20,000, you nominate your town. Um, there are 15 towns throughout the United States that will automatically get money, but then whoever is nominated the most outside of those 15 towns will get $20,000. Um, you can nominate Smithfield once a day from now until when it ends, which I don't know exactly when it ends. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, if you'll go to Historic Downtown Smithfield's Facebook page, I think it's on Parks and Recs as well, um, then you can click on that link. It takes less than a minute. Um, so one of those things that, you know, twenty thousand dollars for our parks would be huge. So. Be great. Yeah, just, just, just something else, you know. And um, you know, help, healthy, healthy communities have healthy parks. Keep so putting. I encourage everyone in the audience and here to please go vote. Keep putting it on Facebook. Yeah, just keep I posting it. it. I, 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 I would like to mention sure. that I, uh, I got a magazine in the mail this month. Gardening Gun or our state, I can't remember. There was a there was a uh, article about uh, ham, country ham. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? I don't think so. Not uh, yet. And it was had a historical listing of events to do with <coughs> ham that they were salt cured, and it started in Italy or Rome or somewhere in 600 BC or whatever, and went all the way down. But 1985, there was a uh, it it said that Smithfield had a country ham contest mm -hmm. and uh, Smithfield hams from Virginia came here and lost. Mm -hmm. They thought it was home cooking mm -hmm. and they came back in 1986 and lost again and said they'd never come back. <laughs> <laughs> but my question is, it made me think could, is that something we could revitalize and could we possibly do some kind of barbecue cook-off that is so popular? I'd like to see some of, some of that tied in with, with, with what we're doing at Ham and Yam. We do have a barbecue cook-off, but it's a little bit different and it's not obviously country hams. Um, that may be something we could revive. Um, Just an idea. I'll be honest with you, if there's another nonprofit group that would like to take it on, Ham and Yam's a great um, platform for the Kiwanis Club to sell hand biscuits and the fire department they started having a um, and it's not the fire department it's a group of firefighters but they've started having um, a food booth there and uh, the Smithfield Selma High School band comes and sells raffle tickets and raises money in Relay for Life and tons of nonprofits use Ham and Yam Festival as a platform to raise awareness and funds for their organization so I don't know that the DSDC can take on an additional thing um, but if there's another nonprofit that will be interested, we'd certainly be glad to help walk them through that process and promote it and that sort of thing. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, just one last thing, I want to thank um, uh, the council members and, and whoever else, uh, the staff and so forth that attended the, the um, Chick-fil-A Leadership Academy basketball game. I know Councilman Lee was there um, coaching from the sidelines. Um, cool. 
but that was a, that was that was a great event held at Triple S last week, uh, where the the students got together and and played a game of basketball with uh, local law enforcement, and um, I can tell you that it it was a really really good event. Probably it probably play, paid more dividends than most of those kids really even realized. But just getting out there and playing with the officers and the, the you know the sportsmanship and so forth that they showed and the, the smiles on their faces can can will probably go a long ways. And uh, I want to thank everybody who did attend um, um, that that event. And hopefully it will continue on. This was the first year they've had it, the Leadership Academy, and they were trying to raise raise money to buy uh, Chromebooks um, for for some of their classes and so forth. So. Um, hopefully it will continue and, and um, build in, in years to come. So, so thank you very much. Chief yeah. Powell, on that note, we need to get some ballers. I know y'all protect and serve, but we need to get some ballers too. Mr. Manager, I'll turn it over to you for your report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We only have a few things this evening. Uh, first, I want to thank all the volunteers that were here earlier and here still. Um, Smithfield is a lot better when we have volunteers helping us move along. Frankly, a lot of what we do, we would not be possible without volunteerism throughout the, throughout the city. So, Thank you for all you do, and thank you for helping us. Um, Johnson Park out on the west side off of Highway 70 has new playground equipment. Um, it is completed uh, with just a little bit left on it. We anticipate it being completed by the end of next week. So please stop out there, take a look at what's out there and uh, take your children or grandchildren and, and enjoy that uh, nice upgraded park. Um, Venture Drive, last, last council meeting, we approved the contract for Venture Drive. Uh, we've been in contact with, with uh, the company, and we believe that that is going to uh, begin sometime by midweek next week. Uh, so there will be construction going on on Venture Drive. We are making contact uh, with the property owners out there, make sure they're aware of the schedule. Um, there will be some disruption. There's no way there won't be, but we will minimize it as best we can. Um, some good news on... Uh, the Buffalo, or I'm sorry, Booker Dairy Road project. Uh, Kelly Drive was an extension of that project, a separate project. Um, we're hopefully moving forward with that to connect it all the way up to Buffalo Road. Uh, things are looking positive there. Um, Mr. Ambler has been working very hard with both property owners out there and NCDOT to bring them together to create a plan to move that road from existing Kelly Drive all the way out to Buffalo Road, and hopefully that will occur. Uh, I have great confidence that it will and should run parallel with the Booker Dairy Road project, if not be done before that project is complete. Um, and that is, please do put on your calendar Ham and Yam on May 6th. Uh, come out, support your community, uh, support your downtown businesses uh, and the vendors that are there. So. Please do come out, bring your children, have a good time. Should be a great day. Okay. Mr. Manager, can Sir. we get an update on the Family Life Center? Is there anything changed or? Um, there are some changes. Um, the Family Life Center has been, the, the lien for the Family Life Center has been purchased by a different company. It is no longer in the hands of BB and T Bank. Um, it is in the hands of a company called LS Financial out of Los Angeles. And I've, been, I've been talking to them um, and I have, have great confidence that we'll be able to work something out there. Um, Chief Powell is continuing to clean out the building, uh, identifying needs uh, so that we can bring those to the council to get moving on that project a little bit faster. Can we get those pine trees taken out of the gutters? Yes, sir. We're working on it. <laughs> yeah, that'll put fertilizer in <laughs> So they provide some shade. Getting bigger. But uh, just one thing, Mr. Manager, I, I, mean, I was looking at the, the financial um, 
graphs. Just one question. I was looking at the 2015 electric fund as compared to 2016 electric fund. And um, it looks like uh, for 2016, we, we've got about uh, 10 million 700 in revenue and about 10 five in expenditures. And last year at this time, we had a uh, little over, well, almost 12 million in revenues with about 10 million in expenditures. Um, when I looked at the graph, and that's why I like to see these graphs, and Greg, um, it gives me a quick, quick glimpse of what's going on here. Is there any reason? I know we lowered rates. I know we've had uh, relatively warm, I guess, uh, winter, but is there any reason for us to be concerned at this time right, with the electric fund? I do think that um, our revenue is going to be met for the electric department. Okay. And you hit it on the head. Um, we had a generous surplus last year. Um, you chime in anytime you want. And uh, the decision was made to reduce electric rates on average about 2.7%. Um, it is a little close for my comfort right now. Um, while we will probably reach our revenue goals, it's hard to say because we did have a warm winter. Um, and we always want to end the year up um, in the black, so to speak. We want to earn more money than we spend um, and always put monies aside for um, the unexpected and future capital expenditures that may come up with an electric department. So I do have concerns. Uh, but we're looking at those numbers monthly as they come out. And um, I will have March's numbers uh, in about a week. Of course, we typically don't get them out to the board until April, but you're welcome to call me well in advance um, anytime to see where we are. Okay. So Mike, I, I would ask you, I know you're probably keeping an eye on it, but keep a close eye on it. I know we've got only a few, you know, a few more months left in, in the uh, in the budget period, but from a spend standpoint, uh, Ted, I would ask that you guys take a very close look at that, and if there's anything that we might be able, you know, any mm -hmm. large ticket items that we Ted, can do without. Yeah, Ted. Ted, can you tell us how, what uh, damage was the result of Hurricane Matthews that we've had to front the costs on? Yeah, we've we've had uh, obviously some equipment and material costs that we had to replace during after the in the aftermath of Hurricane. Matthew, we've not received any reimbursement yet from FINA in that, in that regard. Also, the, the Duke Energy Electrical uh, Charging Stations, we've fronted that. We'll be getting reimbursement for that as well. So there's some monies that have been some put out that we will items. be getting back, okay. uh, maybe in the area of uh, $100,000 or $200,000, something okay. like that. All right. Thank you. Good. All right. I just want to bring that to everybody's attention and just make <laughs> sure that we're keeping a good, good, good watch on it. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, gentlemen, we need to go into a closed session. I need a motion. Yeah, and I do need a motion. Mr. Mayor, make a motion. We go into a closed session pursuant to the NCPS 143.318.11. Second. All right, and this is for the purposes to discuss possible property acquisition with the town attorney. This time we will go into closed session. <laughs>